so much of the show has been about dreams and aspirations with these kids. So I think it's sort of the most important part of the show is now coming where we see like, what is it actually like and what does it take to actually pursue a dream? New York has always been the representation of the next step and all the new challenges and new opportunities that it presents. One of our, our creators, was telling us, he's like, what we want to kind of go after is the individual growth of the characters and kind of how they're getting thrown into this world from being in high school to where they actually have to be adults now. Come on, look around you, okay? We're not in high school anymore. We're adults and we're in New York City. Just being on a different set or being in a different location immediately changes the dynamic and how you're dealing with the scenes. That was really important and brought an unexpected flavor to the show to see how these friendships, not just the individuals, but how their friendships sort of like blossom and didn't in this new environment. from the beginning has really never ever been about just one person. It's sort of been an ensemble show from the beginning. And as we thought about bringing characters to New York, a lot of the characters' trajectories brought them there anyway. So that was a really great feeling to have. Being in New York is really fun, whether it's fake New York in LA or actual New York in the island of Manhattan. You know, if Lima, Ohio was a major character in the plight of these kids, New York City has always been a character that they've all strived to meet along the way. I think the biggest dynamic is that in high school, it's a safe environment or I know I'm going to be at this school for four years. So that is the biggest change where we're all of a sudden having to deal with real life issues. Hey! Hey! It has presented new challenges for them and new situations that has allowed us to see everybody in a different light. And whether it's from the grand side, seeing Rachel Berry finally accomplish her dream of being Fanny Bryce, and then to the more practical, real-time things like what it's like to live with somebody outside of home and to be outside of your comfort zone, and what it's like for Blaine and Kurt to coexist in the same apartment, and all these adult things that New York kind of threw at us. It's a much more natural environment where you then, as those characters, are in a real-life setting. I really wish I could be helping you guys. Oh, don't worry about it, Artie. We knew you would help. Rachel, on the other hand, I don't know. What? I'm texting my publicist. The interesting thing about it is I feel like it's very different when we're we're kind of like separated, but when we have scenes when we're all together, it's almost like being in the choir room again. And it was also fun when we actually got to go shoot in New York. That was great. That was really cool. It's a much different experience. It's amazing what you can achieve just by sort of judicious shooting in New York and sort of like letting those New York shots do a lot of the work for you. We shot really cool stuff there. I spent like 13 hours on a subway one day with Leah, but it ended up being like a really, really fun day. Don't sleep in the subway, darling. Don't stand in the pouring rain. We had one of the platforms for ourselves, but they had the other one open. So like, we'd be shooting and somebody would like get on the train and yell, Artie! <laughs> so that was, and the crew was giving me crap for that too. What's so amazing about New York is you can sort of like plop a camera anywhere. You can just shoot anything and it just has this incredible, like rich feel to it. Brad Beaker shot a great, great number at this carousel that's just below the Brooklyn Bridge. It's a magical place. Amber and I in court saying, let's wait a while. Let's wait a while. Our love will be great. Let's wait a while. The shooting under the Brooklyn Bridge was crazy because we were there in one of those polar vortex times where it was freezing. And we're supposed to be like, oh, it's beautiful. Look at all the scenery. We're all like, dying and it's like 2 a.m. and the cops have shown up because we gotta get like we're there too long so it was fun it felt like every time we go to new york it feels like gorilla shooting it's a fun field trip Smart. we're in uh, downtown burbank at a mall performing a song called shake in my head You know, Brad Falchuk wrote the lyrics to it. I think him and Ian kind of bounced off of each other. And Adam Anders, he did the music to it. But the song came out really awesome. I directed the episode where she and Santana were able to do a song I've been wanting to do on the show forever, which is Lauren Hill's That Thing. We've been trying to get that song from like season one. Been three weeks since you was looking for your friend, the one you that hit it and never called you again. Remember when he told you he was about the Benjamins? You act like you would hear him and gave him a little trim. My songs with Naya are always my favorite and then to be able to rap and do a Lauren Hill song, which when I was little, I walked around the house singing all of her songs, so I pretty much already knew doo before I even did it. That thing, that thing. 
having Adam Lambert on the show was amazing. Why not use this as a great opportunity to get to know my new friend, Elliot? Cucumber sandwich? Thank you. You can tell he has musical theater training because he's just very engaged, very animated, and then just like a really incredible voice. I believe in a thing called love. Just listen to the rhythm of my heart. There's a chance we can make it now. We'll be rocking till the sun goes down. I believe in a thing called love. The song that I'm singing with Chris is called I Believe in a Thing Called Love. The song turned out amazing. I'm really happy with it. And, you know, every week so far that I've been on the show, it's like, okay, here's the song, and this is what we have in mind for the movement. And this is my second time where they've said, you're going to swing up on the ceiling. And Chris is, uh, he's on the stripper pole. I was kind of like, stripper pole's all you. You, you have fun with that. Glad they didn't ask me to do that. I don't think that's really in my skill set. They knew that I would, would have fun with it, so they, they put that in there for me, I think. Yeah. And then the rotating thing, I mean, I gotta get this in my house. I'm not trying to take over your band, man. And that's what you're thinking, right? I mean, that's why we've been spending so much time together. And having that character of Star Child sort of like threaten to overshadow Kurt just as he's beginning to sort of like find his way in New York was, was a funny storyline to play. The nice thing about this is that by the end, they figure out they're actually friendly with each other and Kurt has nothing to worry about. So let's not be these like smiley frenemies that backstab each other. Let's go out and kick ass together. <laughs> yes, who's taking over New York? <gasps> the Sam and Mercedes relationship is one of the relationships, one of the few relationships on the show that we hadn't really paid off. We sort of teased it, and then it sort of disappeared, and it was always something that we had an eye to paying off. What are we gonna do about the, our sexual chemistry, because it's... Uh-uh, no, been there, done that. The relationship stuff with me and Mercedes, there was a lot of struggles sexually that I wanted and that she didn't want for her character. And I need to wait, Sam. Okay, um, I, I can I can dig that. Until I'm married. I just thought that it would be interesting to see someone choose something different, and we took it very seriously. Sex isn't the be-all end-all. Well, it's like me and Mercedes, you know, if something's important, you can't let sex get in the way of it. Court is such a magnificent actor and such a funny, funny, funny guy. We like the idea that this guy is sort of homeless in the existential sense, that is sort of like doesn't really know what he wants to do, but like the one thing that he really likes is like his abs. Sam is in New York to be a model. That's right, yeah. It's uh, pretty easy, you kind of just stand there, strike a pose, so he asks you to strip down your underwear, not a big deal. I think one of the interesting things about life and, a, and, and an interesting story stuff that we have on our show is it's like the kind of the struggle to get where you want to get. Ew. I did it! I made my dream come true, look at this! Once you get there, it's kind of like, now what, find something else to kind of go after, but like the kind of the journey getting there is the most interesting part to me. Whoa, hey, what? I'm rolling here! Where are you going? I already saw the chance to get to New York as a fresh start, and he, maybe more than some of the other characters, is just really feeling at home. Already it was really fun to bring into New York. But just having a kid in a wheelchair is such an interesting like point of view. You sort of even forget, like, New York's great. It's a little less great if you have to wheel around in a wheelchair. Hey, move it, kid. Already goes to the Brooklyn Film Academy and is successful with the ladies. Hi, Artie. Hey, Vanessa. Hey, Jess. Hey, Julie. I think he appreciates that people appreciate different things than they do in high school. Okay, I'll cut right to the chase. Now, you have tested positive for chlamydia. How is that possible? I don't know how. You know, some people have street smarts and some people are book smart, and usually you're heavy sided in one of them. Where I think he's definitely more book smart than street smart. Do you wear condoms? No. Well, that would be how. I just don't think he thinks in those practical ways. Who are you? It's like I don't even know you. I still can't believe it. Living together, building a future together. Bushwick, did you ever imagine that? The relationship between Kurt and Blaine became so central. And what's interesting to like remember is that they've had almost a full year of living apart. And then they're all of a sudden living together and on top of each other constantly. I wake up next to Blaine. I, I, I go to school with Blaine. I come home to Blaine. <laughs> And that they find themselves a bit over their skis and have to like have to walk it back a little bit, which was an interesting little blip in their relationship. We decided that I'm gonna move out. Shut up. Really? Don't worry, we're not breaking up. Blaine has had to reevaluate his status in the relationship, or at least his own perception of what that status is. There's kind of a goofy episode where he gains weight and kind of explores this deeper issue that when relationships move to different places, levels can change. It's not a contest, isn't it though? Because for the first time in my life, I really feel like I'm losing. 
the character of Kurt, he sort of come to New York and finds himself a little bit at sea. He's at Niata, but he doesn't feel like he's really the star there. And then this sort of like horrific hate crime happens. So it's interesting to see that character try to get his sea legs and he is facing up to the reality that maybe he isn't a leading man on Broadway. Everyone has moved on to something except for me. I mean, all, all they need me for is to remind them how talented and beautiful they are. It's like they don't care. Chris wrote such a funny, weird, script which was great and it was June Squibb and Tim Conway and Billy Dee Williams. For months we're like what's it about? He's like the elderly and dogs. I'm like sounds about right. Yes it's called Old Dogs New Tricks and it is about Kurt and um, Kurt has really not made a name for himself quite like his friends have and he's feeling really lonely so he joins an assisted living production of Peter Pan. Pillsbury, you made it! It was terrifying to write an episode because every time I was at my computer or on set, I was just terrified that my co-stars would hate everything that I wrote. So it was a lot of fun because I got to do things on the show that I've never been able to do before, but it was terrifying. With Rachel Berry, we wanted to tell the story after so much of her being like never quite achieving her dreams to suddenly see what happens when like the dog catches the car. You get to see Rachel finally opening her first Broadway show, Funny Girl, and she gets a little afraid. She has a nightmare that opens the episode. <laughs> But of course, you know, obviously, she makes it. Funny Girl was sort of the logical show to do. Ryan is a huge fan, not only of Barbara Streisand, but that performance in particular. And it was a show that hadn't been revived on Broadway, so it sort of made fictional sense in our world. That It was like, I'm actually surprised they haven't done a, a revival of that. And then Rachel is a big hit on Broadway, and then is told, well, this is all you're ever going to do. If we play our cards right, you could be doing Fanny Bryce for 5, 10, I don't know, 15 years. Which just plants a little seed in her about, like, is this really what I want? Or, like, what else do I want? I've got a pilot that I think you would be fantastic for. Does this sound like something that you would be uh, interested in? Yes, of course. <laughs> Which just fits that character, because for ambitious people, you never stop being ambitious. And in so doing, it is sort of an interesting way that we want to head into the final season of the show. I want to give you a development deal. I don't even know what to say. Just say thank you. Congrats, Rachel. Celebrate with your friends. We'll be in touch. Everybody is in a transition period. People are seeing other people go off and do their own things where I think everybody's questioning, maybe I could do something else too. Maybe I miss Ohio. Maybe I want to go to LA too. Everybody is on their own journey through each episode and figuring out what they're doing with their lives and relationship drama or not. We know it will be fine because we have each other's back. Let's hug it out. Come on. Yes. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Bring it in. I feel like nothing changed at all. And if you close your eyes, does it all?